The T-72 is a legendary main battle tank that has played a significant role in the history of armored warfare. Developed in the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, the T-72's robust design, firepower, and adaptability made it a staple on battlefields across the globe. This video delves into the history, development, and combat legacy of the T-72. The origins of the T-72 can be traced back to the early 1960s, when the Soviet Union sought to replace the aging T-50 for 55th's tanks with a more advanced and versatile design. In 1969, the T-72 was officially introduced into service, becoming the backbone of Soviet armored forces, designed to be a cost-effective alternative to the more complex T-64. The T-70 to retained many of the T-64's features while simplifying production and maintenance. The T-72 featured composite armor which combined layers of steel, ceramics, and other materials to provide protection against various types of ammunition. While not as advanced as some Western counterparts, the armor was effective against most anti-tank threats. The T-72 was equipped with a 125mm smoothbore main gun, capable of firing a wide range of ammunition, including armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabot AP FSDS rounds and high-explosive anti-tank heat shells. This gun provided the tank with substantial firepower and the ability to engage targets at extended ranges. The tank was powered by a V12 diesel engine, delivering good power to weight ratio and allowing the T72 to reach speeds of up to 60 km per hour, 37 miles per hour on roads. The mobility of the T72 made it suitable for a variety of terrains. Speaking of mobility, tank was equipped with snorkel system, which made tank able to cross rivers. One of the distinctive features of the T-72 was its automatic loading system, which reduced the crew size to three by eliminating the need for a dedicated loader. This allowed for a smaller turret and greater ammunition storage. The T-70 saw its first combat in the 1973 Yom Kippur War between Israel and Egypt and Syria. While it suffered losses due to Israeli tactics, and better equipped opponents, it demonstrated its potential as a versatile and capable tank. The T-72 was also used in various conflicts during the Cold War, including the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. One of the most notable conflicts involving the T-72 was the Iran-Iraq War 1980-1988, where both Iran and Iraq employed substantial numbers of T-72s. This war highlighted the tank's strengths and weaknesses, with some instances of successful engagements and others where it faced challenges, especially when confronted with improved anti-tank weapons. The T-7 also saw action during the Gulf War in 1991, when Iraqi forces invaded Kuwait. The tanks faced overwhelming opposition from the coalition forces, including the technologically superior American M1 Abrams tanks. The Gulf War exposed the vulnerabilities of the T-72's armor and targeting systems against advanced opponents. Despite its limitations, the T-72 remained in service with various countries around the world, including many former Soviet republics and client states. It was often employed in conflicts, where opponents lacked advanced anti-tank capabilities. Over the years, the T-70 to underwent several modernization programs to enhance its capabilities. Various upgrades focused on improving armor protection, adding advanced fire control systems and integrating new types of ammunition. These upgrades extended the T-72's service life and maintained its relevance on the battlefield. The T-70 to main battle tank stands as an enduring symbol of armored warfare innovation from the Cold War era. 
Its history, development, and combat legacy highlight its role as a versatile and effective combat platform. Despite facing challenges posed by more advanced opponents and changing technological landscapes, the T-72's influence can still be felt. In the design of modern tanks and its continued service in numerous conflicts around the world. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content.